I made a pretty serious miscalculation. And uh, upon discovery of that, I rendered a few expletives not appropriate for this video. <laughs> Okay guys, so as I mentioned before, I'm gonna be building a post and beam style building using four by fours. So today what I'm gonna do is uh, install four four by fours uh, vertically along each 24 foot run on the outside. So there'll be one in that corner, there'll be one in that corner, there'll be two in the middle here, and then same thing on that side. And then on the 16 foot run outside, I'll have one four by four in the middle on each end. So that's 10 four by fours that I'll be installing. And then across the top of those will be a run of four by fours as well. And so I'll notch those together with a, a lap uh, notch. Uh, so they'll run across. I don't have 16 foot four by fours, unfortunately, the longest I could get at my mill were 12 footers. So I've got to do some cutting, but that's okay. Uh, in each of the corners of these four by four supports, I'll have four by four angle braces as well. So all of the wood will be used. Um, I won't be wasting any of this four by four timber. Um, after I get that done, then I will put temporary bracing up and that temporary bracing will support these walls, obviously, uh, right up until I get the roof on. So I won't take that temporary bracing down until I install the roof. Um, then I'll just simply attach nailers to receive the siding, which is gonna be a mahogany siding. I, I originally wanted to do board and batten, but here in Oregon, um, it's better to do the mahogany siding. I did get battens that I'm going to put on the outside of that mahogany siding that'll run every 12 inches. So I'll have the same look as a board and batten building, uh, but I will be using uh, mahogany siding sheets. Um, and then I will frame up my windows and doors. Uh, the windows, I'm actually going to use recycled windows that I found. They're old vintage windows that were found inside that, uh, that mini log cabin that we found on the property. Um, the look that we're going after with this building is sort of an old world, you know, English country style cottage. That's what our home that we're going to build is going to look like. And so we want these outbuildings to sort of flow with that look. So I'm not looking for this modern, you know, super clean building. Uh, rather, I'm looking for a finished look that that makes this building look like it's been here for a long time. So those windows will go a long way toward uh, making that happen. Anyway, um, again, the weather's beautiful. I am going to get to work on sizing up these four by fours. <laughs> Well, hi, baby. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. How was the practice? It's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're sure looking cute. <laughs> are we on video? <laughs> you, we might be. <laughs> and how's it going out here? It's going pretty good. Oh, I see some old poster up. Yep. Fun. Just uh, took 
took a little while to get them all cut and uh, measured the right way. But yeah, so now I've got to lay those top uh, those top pieces on. But I've got to cut. I, do, I have to do lap joints to connect them together because they're all four by fours. So that's the nature of uh, post and beam building. What do you think? Amazing. Volvo's joined me this Sunday afternoon <laughs> as the project supervisor. <laughs> so we've got all of the uh, the outside posts up. Those are all 96, I'm sorry, 92 inches uh, in height. And now we're going to lay these top beams on. And uh, what we've done is cut lap joints uh, as you see there at the end of these 4 by 4s So these are both 12 foot 4 by 4s So these will lap together over these two posts here. And then at the other end, uh, I've cut a bottom lap for the span that will run the 16 feet uh, up top there. So all of these top uh, beams will be connected through these lap joints. Well, good morning, gang. So last night when I was here with Lisa and I was setting these top beams on top of the posts, I made a pretty serious miscalculation. And uh, upon discovery of that, I rendered a few expletives not appropriate for this video. <laughs> so anyway, what happened was my span here is a true 24 feet. So I'm 288 inches from corner to corner. My post, my four by four posts that I have um, are 12 foot posts. 
that is uh, 12 foot uh, four by fours. That's as long as my lumber yard would sell or, or had available. So they had eight, 10 and 12 footers, no 16 footers. So anyway, uh, I felt like, you know, no problem. Uh, I'm a true 24 feet. So 12 and 12 is 24 should be no, no, no problem. Well, what I didn't calculate properly was this lap joint in the middle. So, you know, dimensional four by fours, the true width is three and a half inches. And if this lap joint, <laughs> I, I, I calculated for these two to butt up against each other, not cross over three and a half inches into this, uh, this beam here. So bottom line is when I laid this lap joint together, that end of the four by four did not meet the corner post. Uh, I was three and a half inches short, which is what's in this lap joint here. So that was a major goof up. Um, I should have had a post that was 12 feet, three and a half inches in order to lay properly on that corner post. So my remedy is, uh, it's not gonna be a problem. Um, temporarily, I have a secondary, or I have this four by four here attached to the corner post that this top uh, beam is setting on. What I'll end up doing is placing a full 92 inch uh, secondary post here in the corner that this will rest on. So engineering wise, it'll be perfectly fine. In fact, this building is engineered uh, to withstand snow loads uh, on the roof, and I don't have uh, snow here in, in southern coast of Oregon. So um, it's really kind of over-engineered for this location, which is great. In addition, as I mentioned, there'll be corner, four by four corner braces here as well. In fact, in all at all of the different posts. So, um, I was not expecting that. I didn't calculate that correctly, but uh, that's something to consider if you're doing lap joints. Uh, I will be doing the same engineering on this side, this 24 foot run. Um, my 16 foot runs are gonna be okay because um, what I'll do is the, I will run, uh, well on this end I'll have the lap joint that'll run halfway into this middle post. And then the other uh, eight footer will run to a lap joint on that end. So it's really just these two corners where I'm gonna have to install uh, these additional posts. No big deal, but uh, thought you might be interested in that. Okay, gang, so I finished putting up all of the 4x4 posts and beams. Uh, next up, I'm going to put the temporary bracing up. So, um, that, as I mentioned earlier, that temporary bracing will remain until I actually have the roof on, and then I'll take it down. So, the bracing goes on the inside of the structure so as not to interfere with the rest of the, the building. Um, so I'll do that now, and then after the uh, temporary, temporary bracing, I will build the angle supports uh, for all of these different uh, corners where, where I have the post and beam. So there will be 4x4 four four angle supports in every corner. So that will be the next step, and uh, 
hopefully that will go pretty quick if it does then i'll be able to start on the next step which is going to be framing in the windows um, and also installing the nailers for the outside siding so uh it's coming along weather is perfect it's still a little chilly this this morning uh it's about 10 30 right now and um i'm in the shade at the moment but uh it's still beautiful <laughs> As I'm putting up this temporary bracing, I'm also checking to be sure that my walls are square and plumb. Okay, so I've got all of the temporary bracing in place. I'm square and plumb. As my buddy Bob would say, that is Vitadini-like. <laughs> Next up is the corner bracing, the four by four corner bracing. And uh, I need to go ahead and cut those braces. Uh, I've got quite a few of them because they will go in every corner that you see that has a four by four post and beam connection. So let's get to work on that. Okay gang, so except for the two far corners where I need to install those additional 4x4 posts, I've got all of the angle bracing completed, the 4x4 angle braces. That was much easier than I thought it would be. Um, all 45 degree angle cuts, which is easily done with the miter saw, and um, because the building is pretty dang square and plumb, uh, those braces went up real clean. So I was real happy about that. Again, I'm not a carpenter. I'm just a simple man trying to build a simple building. <laughs> All right. All right, good morning guys, we're back at it. So you may recall when we acquired this property, we were just delighted to discover this old mini log cabin on the property. Uh, it appears to be, you know, like an old prospector's cabin, super cool. Anyway, inside this cabin, you can see there are some old windows. So whoever owned this property before us obviously was collecting some windows they're all different sizes. They look like single pane windows and they're all wood. So I'm going to actually use uh, as many of these windows as I can on the uh, building that we're making. So again, we want that building to have sort of an old world look and we want it to look like it's been here for a while. So those windows are gonna be cool. 
it's not going to be conditioned space. It's not um, habitable space. It's just a shop. So again, the uh, the insulating factor associated with the windows doesn't matter to us. Um, it's really more about the aesthetic uh, appeal of those windows. So anyway, another beautiful day. Going to keep going. And today I am going to be framing in uh, the windows. So let's get going. Okay, so I am building an 8 by 16 foot loft in this building as well. Uh, so I'm just nailing the 4 by 4s for the front posts of the loft. Uh, these are at 86 inches high. That'll be the, uh, the deck height of the loft. So I've been working on the nailers and the framing for the windows. I went into the uh, the old log cabin up there and pulled those old windows out. And I don't know that they're going to actually work for me after all. They're pretty uh, rotten. There's a, a uh, dirt floor in that cabin. And they've been sitting on that dirt floor for who knows how long. So a lot of the bottoms where those windows were sitting are rotted out. So what I may end up doing is taking the glass panes and building my own windows. Um, I've decided that this is going to be the entry side of the, of the shop. Uh, the door will go here. And then I'm gonna frame up two uh, 24 by 24 windows, one here and one here. And then on this side of the building, because the, the house that we're going to build is going to be that direction. And so when you're looking out at the house, we want this building to, you know, look pretty cool. So windows, windows, entry. And then I'm going to do two 48 inch windows on the gable end, this gable end of the building. So here and here. And then the rest of the building is just going to be solid wall. The back side will be solid. Uh, that's where the loft is on that side. Uh, so I don't need windows there. And then I will have another door uh, opposite this door on the other side of the building. Uh, but other than that, I don't think I'm going to do any more windows on, on, on the opposite side of, uh, of the building. Not sure yet, but uh, I think I'm just going to do windows here and here. All right. Okay, gang, so I've got all my nailers up and I've got all of the windows framed that I'm going to begin with anyway. Uh, nice thing about the way this is framed out with the nailers uh, is if I want to install windows in the future, it's real easy to do that. I just frame them up from the inside, get my saws all and cut out the windows. So for now, I'm going with these two four by four windows in the front or on the, on the gable end here and then the two 24 by 24 inch windows uh, to the left of the entryway there on, on that side. So uh, that wraps up the nailers. Uh, they'll receive the siding um, and then of course frame out the windows. Next up, I'm gonna begin building the loft which will span the full 16 feet uh, wide and will exist at that end of the, uh, of the building. So I'm gonna get that done next. Okay guys, so I just finished putting the rim joists up for the loft. Um, I've got this center post that I'll cut to size and it will set to be a support for this doubled up rim joist in the front, uh, doubled up two by sixes. Set that in place and then all I have to do is cut the rim joists. Uh, I believe there are seven of them. Uh, they'll be spaced 24 inches on center and uh and then i'll lay my deck board for the uh for the loft and i'll be good to go the roof is going to be an 812 pitch so i'll have pretty good amount of space up there i'm not going to build a uh permanent uh ladder but rather i'll just use my step ladder when i need to get up there 
So that's it for this video. I appreciate you guys coming along for the ride. Stay tuned for next week's video where I will put the skin on this building as well as build the roof system. So I've got about three or four more days of sunshine in the forecast uh, and then rain after that. So I would love to get the roof on before that rain comes. And that's my goal. So again, thanks for coming along for the ride. Uh, subscribe if you haven't yet. Smash that like button. We'll see you in the next video.